Truck it, it's time. It's time. You're Dooner with Dooner. Welcome back. Welcome back. Welcome back. Baseball. Did you see the game? Orioles, Sox, Saturday night. Adam Duvall, walk off. Beautiful thing. Beautiful thing. I love how baseball's back because the weekends are for building and they're also for baseball. But build, we did this weekend. I showed you that Optimus Prime I got for my birthday. Opened it up with my kids right here. Take a look. Showed them the classic Transformers movie as well. Traumatized them with the death of Optimus Prime. A rite of passage every boy between the age of six to eight must learn. Uh, the cool thing here, too, is even got a matrix of leadership, and you don't have to pass it on to the doofus Ultra Magnus. Big fan of those. We're getting deep into trucks today, too. Justin was at Matt's. Take a look at these tiny trucks. And tell me this. Do trucking shows have the best boots or what? remote control trucks? I mean, this kills a uh, Yeti bottle or whatever you're going to stick at your booth. He told me, too, you got to use the uh, the joysticks. I believe Shell Rotella put this particular display on. I'm all for it. I got to convince someone to get some of these things over at... Uh, F3 or the future of supply chain in Cleveland. <laughs> Speaking of mats, one other thing on here. Drop that one down. You guys saw the, the arm wrestling tournament. We had the over the top arm wrestling tournament with our trucking participants over at the show. If you didn't, here's a quick recap. How about a hey, little preview? Arm wrestle, you too. Oh little God. preview. I'm left handed, so. <laughs> 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 This is the What the Truck Arm Wrestling Tournament. Oh, what happened here? Was it a tie? Yeah, it was a tie. Okay, Put the arm up. Like trivia word. All right. <clears throat> let's see who's got it. All right, on the bell. All right, let's go. All right. Gracie and Gibson. Uh, Poor Gibson oh, falls no. right out of his chair. <laughs> took, right on know, his ass. I know what the problem He didn't have the hat on backwards. He didn't, he didn't do oh, the yeah. wink and a hawk. Really right, let's get it up. Square up. <laughs> let's see who's got on the bell. These guys are from Clean Harbors go. and NASCAR yep. right here. Go he sounds all like a big dude though over at Clean Harbor. Yeah, no chance. I love it. No <laughs> chance. <laughs> the strongest I'm, guy. I'm at, a, I'm at a disadvantage too because I'm, like, I'm left-handed. So okay. All right, on the bell. Right, there, we there we go. Let's see. Oh, he's you got to put, you gotta put <laughs> your elbow down. He's very strong. He got me. He got uh, me. Oh, <laughs> he's out of there. You just got buried. All right, Justin. Was it was a poor shot. I sent him down as my social media guy. Next time, I gotta send someone with a better lever and fulcrum strategy but this thing got settled at the bar that night at Matt's. we had the finals of the tournament let's take a look who the ultimate winner is gord mcgill versus mike lombard the mullet versus the alligator hat oh. now if you remember if you remember lombard he did those 14 <laughs> pull-ups at Matt's. But Gord is fiery. No. No, it's over the top. He took him down. Nice showing. Mike Lombard. He put his money where his mouth is. He put his arm where the cup is. He told us, get in shape. He lost 50 pounds for his wedding, and he just put it all on display by kicking everyone's ass at Matt's with the ultimate arm, the golden arm. Anyways, on the show today, I'm talking to XBO CSO about spinoffs, LTL standalones, market disruptions, and the company's LTL, sorry, LTL plans, M&A plans, also their LTL 2.0 plans. We have First Gear's Eric Arish. They created a 164 scale replica of the Silver Screen's most notorious autonomous truck. That's the Green Goblin from Maximum Overdrive. We'll hear all about that one. Uh, ARL Transport's Ron Faraday. He's handled everything from Star Wars props to the Warthog from Halo. We're going to talk all about his epic freight that he has touched, as well as uh, the coalition he's doing to give owner-operators a voice with the Pro Act. We got Bit Freighter's Brad Perling. He's going to share his founder story, and he talks about um, loading bidding bots, load board bidding bots, and integrations, and what's life like at Cowan Logistics? That's Ben. He's in the bullpen, so let me tip the band, and I'll bring him right up. Your customers and investors want to know what your company is serious about. Sorry, it's a new one this month. Your customers and investors want to know that you 
that your company is serious about sustainability. Show them the depth of your commitment when you rely on AIT, worldwide logistics for your freight forwarding needs, from scope three carbon footprint reporting to calculating emissions at the transaction level. Partnering with AIT sends a clear message to stakeholders. You mean business when it comes to sustainability. Learn more at AITWorldwide.com. Let's uh, let's get to the life of a broker here. It's Ben. Ben Shuggy, Shuggy, Hoogie. Ben, how do I say your last name? You corrected me online, but the problem is I couldn't hear you. I, I know, I know, right? No, I like Shuggy. I think I'm just going to go by Shuggy from now Shug on. Knight? I, I like that. I, I go by, uh, most people call me Surge, like the best 90s drink of all time. So that works. Either, either of those work. Oh, del- they brought that back, but then it became like an arbitrage, right? Like people would buy them out on Amazon, then they would sell them on eBay for like six times as much for the big uh, Surge stands out there. Right, right, right. What's up, man? You're in, you're in Cowan, right? And I remember you had to come on because last time I showed your office, and I guess I misidentified it. I mislocationed it. Uh, where are you out of? Tell me a little bit about Cowan. Yeah, so I work out of our Sarasota office. I think the office you showed was our was a day in the life video of our Charleston office, which has the amazing the the ping pong or the the uh, pinball arcade, the you know the ping pong tables, all the cool stuff. Sarasota, we have a pretty cool office here too. Not quite as high tech, um, but yeah, Cowan's been around. We're, we've been around for about a hundred years. Um, our brokerage has only been around for about maybe fifteen or so, um, but uh, we're we're growing. We're uh, you know, like a lot of brokers, have had a lot of success since 2020, 2021, uh, But we're still growing. Uh, we're, we've grown year over year uh, so far this year. So a lot of exciting things happening at Cowan well, for sure. Hey, I was going to make it right. I actually have a video of the right office this time. Tell me what we're looking at. Roll that tape of uh, Day in the Life at Cowan. Is that that you? That's not you. No, that's not me. It's it's one of our team leads, Eli. He's he's awesome. I I, uh, graciously volunteered. I sort of of volunteered for this. Now, I'm seeing a lot of people there. So you guys, do do they rope you all back into the office? We yeah we're we're big in office people we have a lot of hybrid remote people uh, but you know there's just something about being in office when you have a cool team, when you have a fun fun space uh, to be at uh, that that is great for logistics so so yeah we we like in the office. Yeah, well, I mean, I've seen, like, remember at the beginning of the pandemic, people trying like, stage, like, Zoom meetings of having these sort of, like, party atmospheres, yeah. but it was always, like, it's kind of lame. It's a lot different when you've got a team lead dancing through the office with a clown mask on. Yeah, yeah. Then you can't have the dance parties through the office. So, I mean, it's, you can, you can have them, but the Zoom dance parties, yeah, not, not quite as fun. Well, what's going on in, in brokerage right now? It's a weird time in freight. You know, we're hearing a ton about layoffs this market has been depressed for almost a year now what's the vibe over at cowan and how are you guys getting by what's your key to success yeah um i think for us it's really been we probably went slower than a lot of people in 2020 so we didn't hire like right off the bat we're expanding opening offices left and right we made sure our systems were good and then we started going pedal to the metal in 2021 so we were kind of like late to the game a little bit um, but it was good for us because we had a really good system in place. For us, we're big believers in no cold calls, so our reps come in. They don't make any cold calls, don't do any prospecting. Um, we really focus on just the customer Wait, experience. Hold on. And making that, sure. hold on a second, Ben. That sounds like I've applied for some brokerage jobs, and a lot of them say that. You will be doing no prospecting. Uh, yeah. You don't need your own book of bit. And then you get there, and it's like, yes, you are. How do you guys, how do you guys cultivate uh, the leads then? Perhaps. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, um, we we basically we centralized it all. So we probably invest, I would guess, ten times what other brokerages invest into lead generation and generating warm leads. So everybody our sales team talks to, there are people who are interested in getting a quote. They want to talk to us. They want to set up a meeting. Um, it's not like you're. We're like, here's a phone. Here's Google Maps, and just go to town. Like. Uh, no, it's it's we we it took us a long time. Uh, it's been something we've been working on for uh, many years, and that's also why we kind of went slow at the beginning of of the whole COVID surge. Was we wanted to make sure we got it right. But once we did, we've really gone pedal to the metal. And like I said, we're still growing year over year. So quarter one's been a great quarter for us. Um, it's been tough, 
it's been brutal. I think you're going to see earnings come out in a little bit, and probably most brokers are going to be down 10 to 20 percent. I would guess. Um, it's been it's been tough. It's uh, volumes down, and uh, I know it's been hard for carriers. Uh, it's 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 been it's been a challenge. But it's trucking, man. You got to survive and advance in this field. We all got to survive and advance and keep moving forward. But one of the things that sometimes gets in the way is a broken down truck. Let's listen to a song. Roll the tape. My wife is pregnant. Sorry, shipper, but I'm getting disconnected. Sorry, shipper, I ate a bad blackberry jelly belly. Sorry, shipper, but I had to make a smelly. Hey, so many bad excuses of why you can't pick up this song. So I make it nice, I make it cool, make it new, make it fresh, make it something, something special. I don't ever say the words, the truck broke down. Don't worry, buddy, I'll pick up the next one, no problem. Words, Ben. <laughs> All right, Ben, what is the worst excuse you have heard about a broken down truck? <laughs> okay, so the, the, the worst excuse I've probably ever heard, and I've, I've heard it many times, like the birth rate in America is probably fine given how many like unexpected surprise pregnancies you hear about when you, um, you know, talk to a, a, a carrier, but... For me, the worst one probably was it started out with, okay, the, the the driver's wife is pregnant, you know, sorry, he has to go to the hospital. I was like, okay, no problem. And then I saw their truck was posted out, same lane that they wanted to go. I called them back from my coworker's phone and was like, hey, like you just said that, you know, your driver's, you know, he, he had to go to the hospital, his wife was pregnant and dispatcher was like, yeah, well, you know, he's, he's okay missing the birth of his son for a better rate, but just not your chief. Your cheap rate, right? so that was a pretty wow. good one. Wow, and it's very, very honest family as well. It was, it was brutally honest, yeah. It was well, yeah. you know, a lot of times we try to thank truckers, right? But a lot of times we also get it wrong. Let's listen to this in song form to the drivers, forgive you anything except a dollar a mile. So, thank you to the drivers, we respect you. Can't wait to inspect you. So thank you to the drivers. Appreciate you, but don't use our bathroom. So thank you to the drivers. I love your patience. That's why we don't pay attention. It's our way, a small, small way of saying thank you. We'll hold your pay for another day, for another thank you. Ben, is this you, by the way? Are you Trucker King on, on TikTok? Yeah. He, he looks a little similar to you. Yeah, 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 this is me. Yeah, I, I do my best, you know, have the different, like, pitch modifications and, and vocal transformers in there. Try well, he was harmonizing at the end, you know, yeah. if you heard that. That was, a, that was a nice tune he was carrying. Well, let me ask you, he, you know, he was he was crapping on some of the things we do to, to thank drivers that happen every other day in this industry. What do you guys do to thank the drivers? So, uh, you know, for us, it's really about uh, one, I think we have probably, if not the most, one of the most competitive sign-on bonuses on our asset side. So our asset division has been around for, for 100 years. Uh, uh, you know, try to make sure drivers can go home every night. Um, you know, of course, it's not always possible in the long haul world. Um, and then for us in brokerage, having that like knowledge of what drivers actually have to go through, what your costs are as a carrier, you know, really helps us from the brokerage side interacting with carriers, whether that's, you know, disagreements about truck order not used um, or uh, layovers or, you know, all the stuff that comes up, detention. Um, just trying to, you know, always fight on the behalf of the driver because, you know, I think everybody in freight knows how hard a truck driver's job is. We all pretend to care about a truck driver, but at the end of the day, they're usually caught in the middle between brokers, uh, their their dispatch, uh, the shippers, and they're the ones taking the brunt of 
of all the pain that that is involved in the supply chain and and they're so important i mean drivers literally keep this country running and so you know i mean it's 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 great that we have a a driver appreciation day one day a year but yeah i mean uh you, you got to do it every day you really do uh, because nope. they're so important well, Ben, thank you for sharing your message with me, and thank you for showing off your office. There, Unfortunately, there have been a lot of layoffs recently in this industry. Are you guys hiring in Sarasota? And if so, how do people contact you to get a job? Yeah, so we are we are hiring uh, slowly. I said we went pedal to the metal on hiring yeah. probably mid-2021. We, we really slowed down, not doing anything like layoffs, no plans for layoffs uh, at, at Cowan. Uh, but we do have some openings uh, especially uh, on the carrier sales and customer sales side. So yeah, if you're interested, um, you can shoot me a DM on LinkedIn, uh, on Twitter, uh, but also just our career page. Uh, you can go to CowanLogistics.com uh, and apply. Ben, thank you so much. Before I let you go, favorite trucking movie? Ooh, favorite trucking movie. Oh, what about, uh, does, uh, does, um, oh man. Favorite trucking movie? I have no idea. You can. I'll give you an easy. <laughs> Maximum Overdrive is on the cover what? today. I mean, you could just go Maximum Overdrive. Oh, okay. there we go. All right, that's there my favorite go. movie. Throw you a lifeline you when you call the host and get your own <laughs> lifeline from Ben. Thank you so much for coming on the show. I appreciate it today. It. We'll have to. We'll have to have you back. Thanks for listening to some music with me. I yeah. appreciate you, buddy. Awesome. Thanks, Take Dan. it easy. I appreciate it. By the way, it's time for a little. Meanwhile. Lovely proposal. Baseball season. Gets the hormones going, gets the love going. This gentleman could not contain himself. <laughs> Neither could that security guard. <laughs> the New York Post reports in a viral video on social media that gentleman, Ricardo Juarez, who is seen in a Mookie Betts jersey. Not sure why the New York Post decided to call that out, but he appeared to jump over the outfield wall and sprint over there. But here's the good news. He got some bruises. He got a sprained ankle, but his girlfriend said yes. Now, I think it'd be only right if the park allowed them to get married over there. I don't know. Let's talk to Ali Fagri. He's the chief strategy officer over at XPO Logistics. Hey, Ali, where are you sitting right now? It looks like you get a little nice view behind you. I'm based in sunny Los Angeles. Ah, oh, is, is it? Well, sunny, but it's been raining a lot over there, hasn't it? It, it has. We've had uh, we've had quite a bit of rain over the last few weeks, but uh, hoping for better weather going forward. You know, if I'm not mistaken, this year is your first year at XBO. You just joined them in January. Tell us a little bit about yourself and what do you what do you bring to XBO as a CSO? That's right. So I joined XBO uh, earlier this year after over a decade on Wall Street, uh, where I was a lead analyst specializing uh, in the automotive and mobility sector. So overall, I have a lot of experience interacting with large investors and specifically those that cover industrials and transportation and markets broadly, which is obviously very relevant to XPO. Uh, in my role specifically, I'm responsible for the company's strategy and analysis of growth opportunities, uh, as well as our engagement with investors. So at a high level, my job is to make sure at uh, XPO, we're effectively communicating our growth strategy to investors while also making sure we do everything we can to create shareholder value. You know, and in creating that value, XPO has made some big changes over the past couple of years. You spun off into multiple new divisions, new CS, new CSO over there. Um, tell me a little bit about all that. How does that fit into your strategy and what are your plans as a standalone LTL carrier? So after the spinoffs, uh, XPO is now primarily a standalone North American-based yeah. less-than-truckload carrier. Uh, we love LTL. It's a stable playing field, uh, both in terms of pricing discipline and the competitive landscape. Uh, we're one of a handful of players that has a nationwide network, which is critical from our customer perspective. And part of our transition to becoming a standalone LTL carrier, we launched a strategic plan a little bit over a year ago called LTL 2.0. And the plan really has three pillars to it. Uh, first, we're reinvesting in the business, so we're growing capacity by adding more doors, while we're also adding more equipment like tractors and trailers so we can say yes to our customers uh, more often and grow with them. Uh, second, we're doubling down on service. The entire organization here is hyper-focused on making sure that every shipment we have is on time and damage-free. And then third, we're deploying technology to improve pricing and drive cost efficiencies. 
So overall, the combination of these uh, initiatives should allow XBO to deliver above market growth in coming years, while at the same time continuing to provide best in class service to our customers. Wow. So maybe this makes a little bit more sense now because you heard me talk to Ben before you came on. On the show, we talk about it all the time. A lot of discussion around excessive capacity and not enough volume. I mean, not a great combination in freight. But, but I was listening to XBO's earning call and you guys said you're continuing your growth plan to open net new doors with 167 opening in Salt Lake City, Atlanta and Dallas. Why does it make sense for XBO to invest now? A lot of people are running scared. They're getting bearish. Well, if we think about these investments as long-term investments, we're not making them for the next few quarters. We're making them for the next few years and beyond. And if you think about the best-in-class LTL playbook historically, it's been to not only invest during the good times, but more importantly, invest during the bad times so you can capitalize on the freight cycles. Uh, also, if you look at where we're adding capacity, it's very targeted. We're adding strategically in areas where we're currently capacity constrained and also where we expect strong growth going forward. Uh, if you take a step back and you think about the 900 net new doors that we, we add in 2022 and 2023, that's about 3% capacity growth a year. So it's relatively modest in the grand scheme of things. Also, I keep in mind that adding doors is just one part of our investment plan. Uh, more than two-thirds of our investment spend is going to be adding more equipment like tractors and trailers. Um, and you know, Tractors, trailers are incredibly important for us, not just to make sure we have enough equipment during strong freight demand backdrop, but they also help us from a cost perspective. Uh, we can reduce our average age of our fleet. That's going to bring down our maintenance costs. And it's also going to allow us to insource our purchase transportation, which is a big cost initiative for us in coming years. So you just said something interesting there. One narrative that we have all heard, if you listen to like any freight media or you actually work in freight and you try to buy some equipment, it got really expensive. It was hard to come by. There were really long lead times for both trailers and tractors. Is that trend improving at all? We're seeing it improve on the margin, but I think really where we have a competitive advantage at XBO is we have our own in-house trailer manufacturing facility. In fact, I think we're the only LTL carrier that I know of to manufacture our own line haul trailers. We have a facility in Arkansas that does this. Uh, it's a fantastic edge to have, especially as you pointed out, when the industry is still struggling to fill orders with OEM. Uh, the latest data I've seen is that there's still a 100,000 plus unit backlog of trailers in the industry. Last year, we produced over 4,700 trailers um, at our facility, and this year, we plan to produce over 6,000. And so as we look forward, this will be a competitive advantage to us that should allow us to navigate this pipe supply backdrop a little bit better than our peers. That seems to be the focus here, because you mentioned that LTL 2.0 plan, and which you're kind of making clear is it's not about today's market. It's about growing with the market that is going to be there. But let's take a step back. Let's stay in the present where our feet are. What's the secret to your success right now in this market? You know, it really comes down to service. I mean, since we embarked on the LTL 2.0 plan, we've seen significant improvements in our key service metrics like damage frequency and on-time delivery. Uh, we launched an incentive program called Gladiator in 2022, where uh, every terminal has a quality target. If they're able to exceed it, the entire team at that terminal is rewarded for the accomplishment. We also deploy technology to rate every single trailer that's loaded, and we use that as a coaching tool to identify improvement opportunities. And all of these initiatives have had a noticeable impact on our service. So you look at our fourth quarter of 2022, uh, our damage frequency improved nearly 70% year over year, and our on-time performance was up 14 points versus last year. So our customers are noticing these service improvements, and as a result, they're rewarding us with more business. Uh, we're not only winning new customers, but we're winning more wallet share with existing customers as well. And that's a big reason why we've been able to outperform the industry from both a shipment count and tonnage perspective uh, in what has been a pretty tough environment for the industry. So what... With that in mind, what is your outlook for the rest of the year? This has been very debatable. So the, I remember back in December, a lot of people were looking at a midterm recovery. And now we're in April, and some people are not. And I'm curious what you're looking at. So it's still an uncertain environment from a freight demand perspective. If you take a step back and you look at our customer mix, it's about two-thirds industrial and one-third retail on the retail side, customers have made progress working through the elevated inventories that were a headwind 
uh, through much of last year. And now they're expecting more normal seasonal buying patterns this year. But it's not uniform across the board. And there's still uncertainty about what consumer demand is going to look like as we progress through the year, which will impact the rate of improvement on the retail side. Uh, on the industrial side, trends have been softer on a relative basis. You can see that in the ISM index, which is an important macro uh, indicator we track. It continued to trend below 50 uh, in recent months. Um, but there are some bright spots even for our industrial customers. So you think about automotive, uh, which is an area that we would expect growth this year. There's been a lot of pent-up demand on the automotive side. And as the supply chains are now normalizing, uh, we would expect growth from our auto customers. So overall, I would say that we're cautiously optimistic that you should see a gradual recovery sometime in the back half of the year, but it's still an uncertain environment. And so we're really focused on what we can control, which is making long-term high return investments in the business, uh, providing best in class service and controlling costs. Wow. Well, you know, bad markets also present opportunity, especially if you have a bit of a war chest. And XBO has historically been known for doing a little bit of M&A. We're seeing some of the other players out there being active. You had Knight Swift with their huge news a couple of weeks ago. You got TF TFI focusing on acquisitions. Do you see more M&A as a big part of XBO's growth roadmap? So we don't anticipate any M&A. You know, if you look, we already have a network that covers 99% of zip codes. We actually see a much greater opportunity to organically grow and enhance the profitability of our existing business through our various initiatives. Uh, through 2027, we actually expect to grow sales 6 to 8% per year on average and grow profits 11 to 13% per year. So very strong growth. And then you look at the, our stock valuation multiple. I mean, we trade right now at about seven times 2023 consensus earnings versus our peers that trade at nearly double that multiple or even greater. Uh, if we achieve our 2027 targets that I just laid out, which we have a high degree of confidence we will, and our multiple starts to expand to more in line with where our direct peers trade at, uh, that would imply a share price here quadrupling over the next several years. So we're really excited about the opportunity to create massive shareholder value. And the great thing is, is we don't need M&A to achieve that. It'll be all driven by organic improvement. Ali, you got a favorite trucking movie? Uh, that's a great question. Um, you know, I think I would go with Joyride. Yeah, oh, yes. Candy Cane, right? Candy Cane chasing down at the rest stops. A fantastic, fantastic one. Yes, the late, late Paul Walker. Great movie. Well, I thank you so much for coming on the show today. Everybody check out XBO Logistics. And thank you for giving us some clarity on both XBO's intentions and what you're seeing in the market. Thanks for having me. Good stuff. All right, let's see here. Did you know that AIT Worldwide Logistics plans to reach net zero emissions by 2035? That's five years before the date targeted by the Climate Pledge and 15 years in advance of the Paris Agreement's goals. But that's just one part of their overall commitment to corporate social responsibility, whether it's protecting the planet, nurturing the communities we live and work, or ensuring high quality business continuity, AIT is taking action today to deliver a better tomorrow. Learn more at AITWorldwide.com. But we're gonna learn more from Ron Faraday, president of ARL Transport. Ronnie, what's up, man? Good afternoon, how you doing? Where are you sitting today, man? What, what part of the world you at? I am standing in my office uh, just outside of Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania, right by the Greater Pittsburgh International Airport. So no lie, I, I, I read your posts on LinkedIn a lot, but then one day you post this picture of yourself on a Halo Warthog. And I'm like, wow, Ron touches some really, yeah, there it is. Ron touches some really, really interesting freight. What do you guys over at ARL do? So, uh, you know, folks primarily know us as an intermodal drayage company servicing ports and rails east of the Mississippi. Uh, that happens to be in our warehouse in Las Vegas. We do a tremendous amount of trade show work in and out of the convention center there. We have a 150,000 square foot facility uh, that we operate. When someone says, hey, like, uh, you know, the, the producers over at Halo say, hey, we got a store a warthog for a convention. How does that go down? What do you have to keep in mind when dealing with a, a special and like really unique prop? You know, we deal with a tremendous amount of um, uh, valuable freight. Uh, right now, you know, we're storing a bunch of freight for the new, um, for the new hard rock is going to be going into Vegas. So, you know, it's, it's day to day. You just never know what's going to come across your dock. 
No, you don't. But doesn't it make it much more fun? Like, do you have do you, do you have a oh, kids or grandkids or or like nieces and nephews? They must go insane if they hear if they hear you got something like that in your warehouse. Absolutely, yeah, yeah. Four kids, five grandkids. Uh, I also own a business where I sell fire trucks, so the grandkids are always climbing over top of fire trucks back at the fire truck shop. Wow. Well, let's take a look at some of this fridge. Show us another picture, Ron. Tell me what we're looking at here. Oh, we got a net. Is that that's your logo on there too? Yeah, yeah. So that was a car that we had sponsored for a gentleman from Western PA that uh, ran the night race at Bristol uh, back in the Bush series. Wow. So, so when you, do you have to use those special NASCAR trailers when you move those things? I was just talking to some NASCAR guys on, uh, on Friday. Actually, I just found out May 13th, I'm going down to Atlanta Motor Speedway to do a race against some other logistics people. I kick their, I kick their ass, Ron. Yeah, his entire team, I mean, you know, they have special car carriers that move multiple race cars. You know, they have their primary car, they have their backup car that is inside those carriers. Nice. What I mean, do you have to get extra insurance? Like those cars aren't cheap. Do you need extra handling insurance or anything like that? Uh, I'm sure the race team would have to. You know, we really never participated in that end of the deal, though we did transport a trailer for the Jeff Green AOL race team back in the day. It was about a one point six million dollar trailer that uh, had the fastest wireless Internet hookup of anything in its day. So we would basically, uh, it became a static display at every NASCAR race to get independent contractors, truck drivers to get AOL accounts. In fact, we were leaving the race in Richmond on our way to Nashua, New Hampshire when September 11th happened. And uh, they actually diverted us into Brooklyn where it became a temporary command center for Giuliani, who was the mayor at that time. And then uh, AOL moved it into Central Park where it kind of became a a grieving victims, uh, anybody, somebody that lost somebody could kind of um, post on a wall out there. Um, so it was quite a different uh, atmosphere for our uh, drivers that uh, operated that unit. Interesting. Well, what about flying? And that's a great, that's a great story. And I'm, and I'm, I'm glad how that, that fit in there. I'm also in my head, I'm thinking about all the truck drivers being handed those like AOL uh, 500 hour free discs so they can stick them in their computer. Yeah. And, and boot ups. What a blast from the past. They used to give out so many of those. I remember in college, we would make like, like murals on walls out of CDs because there was, because those were everywhere. Like 7-Eleven, no matter where you went, you'd be handed one of them AOL discs. You still get some AOL email addresses every once in a while. They still tend to come through. Yeah. Probably a little more popular in the trucking industry than maybe, um, than maybe some other ones. But what what is so like I have a picture here of you flying a truck inside of an airplane. What do you have to consider here? Yeah, so that was actually one of our independent contractors, Dave Dugan, and they actually had to cut the stacks off the top of his truck. And uh, we flew that truck out of uh, Edwards Air Force Base down to St. Thomas after a hurricane. And uh, he spent a month down there um, moving that trailer around with medical supplies, working with doctors, teams after the hurricane. And uh, we actually tried to convince FEMA to just to buy the truck and not fly it back. But, uh, but they did fly the plane back down and they did fly it back. What's the most unique thing that you've had within your warehouse? Ooh, in the warehouse? Oh, boy. Uh, you know, it's hard to say. And some of the stuff you can't say just because of the non-disclosures you've had to sign. But, uh, yeah, we've had some pretty uh, we've had some pretty unusual freight that has come through the warehouse over the years. You know, one thing you're doing, you've worked deeply with drivers for years. And one thing you're also doing is putting together this ProAct coalition. Can you tell me a little bit about this coalition and, and why it's important for drivers to have a voice on this? 100 percent. Yeah. So ARL Transport is a board member of the Thai Coalition. It's uh, www.truckerchoice.org. Um, the Senate has been recently reintroduced the PRO Act bill, which uh, in that bill, it will eliminate every independent contractor in this country, turn them all into W-2 drivers. So, you know, let me be perfectly clear. We have nothing against W-2 drivers. The vast majority of our independent contractors started as W-2 drivers but everybody wants to capture that American dream, have upward mobility, become their own small business owner. You know, we have a little over a thousand independent contractors that are under lease to us. They are our first customer. I tell everyone, 
they are our first customer. And uh, the PRO Act bill will essentially put every independent contractor in the country out of business. Um, you're talking, you know, the numbers, they're fragmented, but you're talking, you know, in excess of 400,000 independent contractors. You know, we have been working with the ATA, the TIA, OIDA, um, to you know, try and get the word out there to independent contractors that they need to pick up the phone, call their senator, call their congressman. Uh, they need to react to this now because this is happening as we speak. Interesting. So if I'm a driver and I'm nervous about this, especially uh, if I don't want to jump to a, a W-2 from a 1099, how do I join your coalition? Why should I? Yeah. So like I said, you can log on to our website. It's www.truckerchoice.org. Um, Unfortunately, yeah, if these independent contractors lose their way of life, you know, overnight, you're going to have four to five hundred thousand trucks that are going to hit the used truck market. The value of these trucks is going to absolutely plummet just based upon the amount of equipment going into that market. Um, I don't think that, you know, this bill has been thought through. I don't think that uh, uh, that folks really understand what a critical place the independent contractor uh, plays in the supply chain model. The independent contractor model has been enshrined in federal law for nearly 90 years. I mean, this isn't some Uber or Lyft model that just came about 15 years ago. This has been enshrined sure. in federal law, and now they're trying to take it away. Well, that, that, I mean, like, who out here, do, there's so many side gigs that spun up during the pandemic. Like, don't don't people out here do some 1099 work at a W-2? I know I do. Like, I don't want that taken away from me. I don't need to be classified as everybody's employee. I need to move freely. You know, like I got one W-2, but I need those 1099s as well. Well, you know, I mean, this not only affects truck drivers, but independent insurance yeah. agents, and you can go right down the list. But, you know, for us as a motor carrier, you know, all of our independent contractors, they all own their own EIN. They're all small, small business owners. They are, you know, uh, very, very vital to the economy. Yeah. Well, hey, Ron, I mean, thank you for toilet paper with stuff, you know, during COVID. It's going to be tougher now. Well, Ron, thank you so much for showing off your cool freight and also shining a light on the Pro Act. Before I let you go, though, what is your favorite trucking movie? Oh, Smokey and the Bandit. Gotta love Jackie Gleason. Gotta love some Jackie Gleason. A little cowbell for picking a classic, too, because so far we've had Matt. We've had actually we've had 80s, 90s and 70s. We had Smoking the Bandit. Someone picked Maximum Overdrive and uh, and uh, Allie at XBO picked um, Joyride. So we got it. We're well represented here, Ron. But appreciate thank, your time this afternoon. Yeah. Thank you so much for coming on the show. I appreciate it. Everybody go connect with Ron and get your voice heard about that pro act. In the meantime, elsewhere. There we go. It's a driver gleaming the cube, doing a little rail slide as he shows his way off on the way to Matt's. Actually, I have no idea what the hell's going on over there. I have, I don't know why he's doing a grind <laughs> other than like it's cool and you can freestyle, but that's probably like really loud in person. Not sure what's going on there. Anyways, let's talk to Brad Perling. He's the co-founder and managing partner over at Bitfreighter. You ever do anything like that, uh, Brad? You ever get freestyle in your, uh, your four-wheeler or your truck anytime? No, I haven't, but that, that looked pretty cool. It, I love uh, I love how you guys have Bit Freight. We have koozies, actually, that have all the misspellings of our of our company name because for whatever reason, it is the hardest thing to get done correctly, Bit Freighter. Um, Wait, where does it – I can't see that far from where I'm sitting. Where It says Bit Freighter? Oh, uh, okay. I, I, maybe it's just what I can see. It just says Bit Freight, and I think it's just so funny because – we just created a, a ton of koozies with like six or seven different names of bit freight because um, yeah, for whatever reason, it's one of the hardest names to say. I, I, for me, it's one of the easier ones though. Like I'm good at the phonetic ones. I'm really bad at the ones that have some sort of like <laughs> accent in them. Cause I'm just going to read like whatever the word says and people online will, will make fun of me. Well, people who don't know, you got all these beer koozies. Now we've established the name. What, what is bit freighter? If you've never heard of you guys. Yeah. Yeah. So bit freighter is, um, integration enablement platform. And what we've done is allowed trucking companies and logistics companies to become uh, integrated and in, with a more simple and uh, affordable platform. So what we've allowed them to do is sign up and easily connect with their trading partners, whether it's via EDI or API. And 
there's the old analogy of what's better EDR API. And it really just depends on the situation. Now, this isn't like freight isn't the kind of thing, especially this isn't the kind of thing like normal people are walking their dog and they're like, oh, I've got it, Eureka. I've got this idea. I'm going to work on integrations and, and automated bids for loads and stuff. Like, do you remember when you had this epiphany that you were going to start the company and why? Yeah, good. I appreciate you asking. So um, I spent the last 13 years um, helping build two logistics companies and um, felt like every which way I turned, somebody was asking us to integrate with somebody and it was never easy. Uh, somebody asked you to integrate. It was, man, I uh, can't, don't know how I'm going to do that. And uh, we'll get to that when we can. And uh, felt like there was a big pain point in our industry where we really needed to help tackle that. And uh, when we launched the company in 2020 uh, with my co-founder, Brendan Joyce, who spent the last 20 years working on deep integrations, the last eight years on a, a big pharmaceutical enterprise company that did uh, integrations for the pharmaceutical space. And we really applied our knowledge base and combined our expertise in logistics and deep integrations to create this integration platform. But really what happened is that um, there was really nothing that really solved the integration space specifically um, that allowed you to scale in, um, in, in just for freight companies. So really being able to do that and do it well and, and from an affordable standpoint is what really checked all the boxes. And I felt like, hey, somebody's got to do this. And um, it was ripe for the taking and, and really helping um, execute on that was uh, Brandon, who spent the first eight months building the software. Well, I'm looking at your website and it says, scale your shipper integrations 10 times with unlimited messaging. Stop losing revenue. How does that stop? How does that help me stop losing revenue? What's some good strategy and how, how does this all work? Yeah. So when we launched the company, we launched the idea of unlimited messaging. And from there, uh, a lot a lot more came with that automation and value added, um, value added features. But to stop losing revenue means that you have to stop paying per transaction. Mm. Um, what we allow you to do is sign up for each trading partner. And we have basically two types of clients, clients that are either spending thousands of dollars on high volume trading partners because they have to be integrated um, part of their compliancy. And they switch to us and it, they, they're saving thousands of dollars a month because it's unlimited messaging. Um, and then we have the other client that are, you know, 200 million to billion dollar uh, trucking or logistics companies that maybe only picked and choosed which integrations they wanted because it was so expensive. And when they moved to us, they take two or three or four trading partners and scale to 50 trading partners because they are able to um, connect with unlimited messaging. And so what, what that allows them to do is when you win a big contract, they can they can really scale the volume with a shipper without the fear of increased pricing. Interesting. So what goes into automated load lifecycle shipper integration? I saw something about like automated load bidding and things like that. Yeah, good, great question. So we solve four problems um, with the shipper. Brokers can now automate their entire life cycle of a load with a shipper by doing four, four things, quoting, tendering, updates, and invoicing. And so our platform allows you to do basically two things. We have two offerings, manage DDI and load accept, which is the part of the EDI platform. And then we also have live quote. And um, based on our um, core foundational values, everything is unlimited. So unlimited quotes, unlimited messaging, um, we believe to scale a logistics company and scale a trucking company, you cannot be held down by transactional cost. Excellent. Well, where do they go to learn more? Yeah, absolutely. So um, you can check out bitfreighter.com to learn a little bit more. And what I would challenge everybody to think about is what are your um, hurdles to integrate and what are your transactional costs looking like today? And if you say, if people come to you and say, hey, I want to add this shipper and the answer is no, 
you are costing yourself money because you can't provide efficiencies within your network because you're making a financial decision over an efficiency play. And what we've done is kind of turned it upside down, allowed companies to scale by uh, creating these integrations with unlimited messaging. Excellent. And before I let you go, favorite trucking movie? Um, I think Convoy. I mean, I know Ooh. it's an old one, but it's, it's, it's one of the best. All right. Now we've had Smoking the Bandit, Joyride, Convoy, and uh, Maximum Overdrive. All right. Pretty well-rounded selections out of you four so far. Thank you so much for coming on the show. It was great meeting you, Brad. Yeah, thanks for having me. Really appreciate it. Take care. All right, everybody. We're going to wrap this thing up by looking at a really, really cool truck. Why don't you tease them with a little video real quick, guys? Yeah. There we go. There's that green goblin hanging out at Matt's in the parking lot. And there's little baby green goblin in all his glory. Beautiful. Let's bring up Adam Knight and Erica Reese, National Accounts Manager over at First Gear, Inc. They are fresh back from selling a bunch of die-cast trucks over in Louisville, Kentucky. And now they're here with us now, probably back in Iowa. Hi, guys. Hey, Hi. good morning. How are you? How's it going? How's it happening? How was your trip back from Matt's? I know a couple of friends who got flights canceled. Oh, yeah, it was kind of wild. We drove down, and when we got about 15 miles south of Indianapolis, we came across, it looks like a distribution center that got ripped apart by a, a tornado. Oh, I saw uh, some of those videos, too. Yeah, from the so people who were driving. Yeah, Justin was there, and, like, the night the night before like that tornado happened, he was like, wow, it's wicked rainy out here. He's at some bar. He was sending me a video. And then the next day, I saw TJ Knudsen was driving home from the event, and it was just like a war zone. Like, everything was just wrecked That's from it. that tornado wow. on the side of the yep. highway. Yeah, TJ, huge. that video that he posted, that was the scene that we came across, and it was devastating. So my heart definitely goes out to those folks. Well, let's talk about what we're here to talk about. Let's talk about this long-awaited Green Goblin truck. Show it off to us. Do you have one with you? Yeah. Yeah, we got it right here. This is our um, first production sample. Show the guys. Show, show oh, them. Look, yeah, not the picture. Show them. <laughs> <laughs> there we go. Yeah. So here's your, here's your very first look at the, uh, the Green Goblin truck. Oh and, my uh, gosh. The focus there. Yeah. Now I gotta ask yeah. you something. When you had to license this truck, did you also did you have to go through the rights holders of Maximum Overdrive? And did you also have to go through Marvel because of the goblin? We had to go through um we did not have to go through Marvel for the goblin since everything was connected to the movie. Uh, we just had to go through maximum overdrive. But that was a part of the huge challenge in in this model because uh it was made by a little studio. Um, and then you find out that studio no longer exists or that studio was bought out and then that studio was bought out. So we had to go down the rabbit hole of, okay, who owns this property uh, and how can we get this made? So it's, it's been a bit of a journey. And then, you know, of course, this model is, is old. So there's no CAD data on this, on the Western Star, on the white Western Star. So that has to all be created from scratch. So lucky for us, it just so happens, um, uh, Nate Lawrence in Oklahoma recreated this truck as, as the video you just showed. That was Nate's truck. And uh, we went down and visited him and took lots of measurements um, and tried to get as many details as we, as we could from his truck and then compared back and forth between the movie, his truck, uh, trying to get that Green Goblin just right and just perfect. I think we did an excellent job trying to capture um, you, exactly you did. how that happened. What is the material on the on the real truck or the replica that Nate had made for the the actual Green Goblin head? Is that fi I've always wondered. Is that fiberglass? What do they make that out of? Yeah, I think it's all made out of fiberglass, if I recall right. Even in the movie and on his truck, um, it was all fiberglass. Eric, what, Erica, what were people saying when they stopped at your booth and they saw this truck? It was wild. People were so excited about it. And it was a lot of fun seeing not only kids' faces light up, but also grown adults. I mean, we had guys showing up even with the T-shirt on. So when they walked past our booth and saw the actual truck, they got super excited. We're like, no way. Are you guys really doing that? And I said, yeah, we are. Wow. What, yeah. what was the most uh, popular truck at your booth this year at Matt's? What was everyone looking for? Well, this one was super hot. The other yeah. thing is, is uh, every single year we do the official show truck for Matt. 
And this year we sold out in record time, all but like three cases of the truck sold out in the very first day. So that was really exciting to see that happen and have the trucks move as fast as they did. Interesting. Well, how, how much was, how much would one of those trucks run me for one of our listeners that wanted to go buy one? The maximum overdrive truck is going to run right around $125. They will be in stock this fall. So if mm. you want it for yourself, you can go ahead and order it. Or if you're thinking a cool holiday gift um, for a movie buff in your life, you could get it on order for them as well. You can find all the ordering information on our website, firstgearonline.com. We also have a fun little blurb about the movie. So if you're not familiar with it, um, basically what happens is, is a comet goes flying past uh, the planet and makes machines like trucks come to life. So you can kind of think of it as a, a toy story, if you will. You know, the toys came to life in Toy Story. And in this movie, things like trucks came to life. Well, yeah, it's like a, it's a parable about uh, autonomous trucking and, and autonomy. More prescient than ever with what's going on in society and chat oh, GPT-4. Sure. That's the comment. That's the comment coming from us. But I have to ask you guys, I have some automation. I wonder if this scares you. Roll this tape right here. Would this help a company like First Gear? This was at Promat. I thought this was pretty neat. Oh, wow. That is pretty neat. We have a, a similar device here at work, but it's not 100% automated. You still have to load it yourself. Um, but that's uh, that's pretty amazing. It is, and it looks like it just has suction cups, right? And it sucks them right on, yeah. and they go up that uh, that conveyor belt. No fears that it would turn like evil, though, right? No, no fears that it's going <laughs> to start a massacre at the first gear factory. Yeah, we'll have to make sure nobody's inside the container area when that thing's operating. <laughs> <laughs> Well, what was it? What was your guys' takeaway from from Matt's? Was the energy good? I've heard a lot of good feedback and a lot of positive feedback from from the event. Yeah, overall it was good. It was nice seeing all the people out and about. It was nice being able to walk the show, see all the show trucks, see all the new technology out there. Um, and then, you know, aside from some other trucks that were popular in our booth, another one. Oh, nice shirt, by the way. I love the shirt you're wearing in that picture. <laughs> Yeah, that, that kind of shows off some of the trucks that we had there on display. Um, on the right-hand side, you'll see some of the John Wayne trucks that we have available right now. I also have one here in the office to show off. This one's a, a pretty neat livestock trailer that we did. Oh, like a bull and hauler we, truck. Yeah, so these are really cool. We did three different ones with the John Wayne marks. They're for sale on our website, and we're doing a promotion on them. The more you buy, the more you save. Plus, you get free shipping. So you might as well go ahead and do the full bundle. Wow. And I, representing Iowa right there as well. Yeah, you know, it was a big loss yesterday, unfortunately, for the team. But what I do love is Caitlin Clark. She's inspired, uh, you know, sports fans everywhere with her, her run in the, in the recent conference games. What what are your feelings though? Like, isn't there some kind of about like the John Cena? You can't see me. People getting in trouble for doing that. Is that okay, Adam? You ever you ever do that to Eric? Like when you accomplished this thing, did you just go up to her and go like that? I <laughs> uh, half tempted, but <laughs> but no. <laughs> <laughs> You're dead. So what what any other icons from the silver screen? Like at the beginning of the show, I showed off that Lego Optimus Prime that I had built. Any plans to jump yeah. into more signature silver screen trucks? We'd love to. Um, that's been a definite goal of mine is to get us. Um, well, that's not a replica. Know, that's that's actually a, that's a real, that's a, that's a big Optimus Prime. That ain't a die cast truck. That's a nice one. Yeah. Yeah. And, uh, you know, they've got the new Transformers movie coming out, uh, I believe later this, this summer. Um, but yeah, it'd be, it'd be awesome to get more involved with more of these studios. Um, some of it's a little hard uh, as we tend to butt heads with bigger toy companies who mm -hmm. have locked down some of those licenses. Um, but our, our commodity is a little different. We're more collectible. We're more for um, adults. And so I think that's where we can kind of sneak in there and say, hey, um, we would love to make these. I think there's a, a great opportunity to make more. So I'm hoping so. I'd love to what? make as many as we can. And another cool thing they do is if you're out, you own your own licensing because it's your own trucking company or brokerage or whatever it is, they will make you a custom truck with your logo and your trailer 
and all of that put on there. Real quick, if someone were wanted to do that, how would they reach out to you? Yeah, they could go to our website, firstgearonline.com, and there is a tab on the website that has a section about the different levels of customization that we can do for our customers. So I'd recommend going there, just fill out a quick form about you know what you're looking for, and one of our helpful team members will be in touch with you. Well, guys, congratulations so much on the latest addition to your fleet and your lineup offerings. Before I let you go, I've been asking everybody today what their favorite trucking movie is. Adam, what is your favorite trucking movie, man? Oh, I'm probably going to have to go with Smokey and the Bandit. Smokey and the Bandit. All right. I like it. What about you, Erica? I'm going to keep it fun. I like cars. You know, the <laughs> oh. kids, you got big old Mac that hauls lightning around, and I really like that one. Okay, well, everybody was wrong on the show today. It is over the top, but thank you so much for joining me. I appreciate your time on the show. Go check out First Gear. Thank you to all our guests. And Wednesday, we'll be back with a special show, What the Truck is coming to you live from Freight Waves 3PL Summit. Go to, uh, what is it, live.freightwaves.com to register. Follow me on Twitter, at Timothy Dooner, or the show, FW What the Truck. Take care, and don't be a stranger.